talk amongst yourselves until I get my sign from the back that we are ready. Good morning and welcome to worship on this 11th Sunday after Pentecost. Just a few announcements for us this week. Um, after worship today, I and Lisa will be heading out for a vacation week, which is why you will see so many notations that we don't have Bible study tonight, nor on Wednesday, nor next Sunday evening as well. Um, so your big event, you get to focus entirely on National Night Out on Tuesday. So um, come and help or come and hang out or come and just get a hot dog, whatever would be fun for you. Um, but please uh, do come and enjoy the evening. Hopefully it will be um, nice weather. And if I am going to pray that this is a quieter week for this community than the last month or so has been. But if you are in need of any pastoral care um, emergency-wise, um, Cindy will have that contact information at the office. So you would just get in contact with her if there is something that you or your family would need. Um, are there announcements in the congregation? Cindy? It's not an announcement. I just wonder if somebody could tell me why there's two bags of... Oh, Bill says he can tell me. Thank you. Cindy must cook something with walnuts is, is the, the uh, story of, of the, the day there. <laughs> Any other announcements? Uh, <laughs> we are still doing our collection um, for uh, most of this month for cereal and instant oatmeal, so the bin is out in the hall for that. And so um, if you are able to pick some up as you are shopping over the next couple of weeks, that will be a help and we'll be going to um, Neighbor Helping Neighbor. I have found out a little bit more information. We will have the opportunity to do a tour over at Neighbor Helping Neighbor. Um, Marianne, the director who was here um, with us a month or so ago, um, is going to offer tours. We are not going to be having a potluck fellowship. Um, that, that is the piece that has dropped away. So we will be gathering our collection, taking it to Neighbor Helping Neighbor, and anybody um, who would like to um, head over there um, with us. We haven't set up a time, but we have ensured that they will be there long enough since our service starts later than many do. They will still be there with enough time for us to schedule a, a time for us. And I think they can take um, about 10 to 12 at a time through um, is what they were estimating. So there is more than enough room for um, folks to, to be able to go along. Sometimes it's just nice to really see those places that we support in action, you know, kind of what, what it looks like um, when they are um, getting all those things ready for the folks that they serve. So this week, you will see in your bulletin, we have a couple of folks celebrating birthdays. Dave Carnes um, is celebrating today, as well as Beth Rev. Bryce Snyder, who is not hiding behind Alan, I don't think. Um, so please extend a um, prayer for them, and we hope that they have a lovely year ahead. And so with that, we will begin our worship together. Please stand as you are able. We do not live by bread alone. Christ is the true bread of heaven, the manna of freedom. 
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, the bread of life God sends is the offering of the only begotten Son. Whoever comes in Jesus Christ shall never be hungry. Whoever believes in him shall never thirst. Believe the gospel. In Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Amen. Together we sing our gathering hymn, Gather Us In.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Giver of life, every day you rain down manna from heaven so that we can eat the bread of angels. Turn our complaints into gratitude that we as a church may grow into the body of the risen Christ given for the life of the world. Amen. The congregation may be seated for the readings. A reading from Exodus. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you. And each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instructions or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked towards the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. Word of God, word of life. Open the doors of heaven, raining down manna upon them to eat, and giving them grain from heaven. So mortals ate the bread of angels, God provided them food enough. The Lord caused the east wind to blow in the heavens and powerfully let out the south wind, raining down flesh upon them like dust, and flying birds like the sand of the seas, letting them fall in the midst of the camp, and round about the dwellings. 
So the people ate and were well filled, for God gave them what they craved. A reading from Ephesians. I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming. But speaking truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. Word of God, word of life. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were beside the sea, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, what must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, what sign are you going to give us then so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to the crowd, very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the gospel of our Lord. Congregation may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
So who here has been watching the Olympics? Oh, I'm like, no one? Literally, no. Okay, a few, a few of you. Okay. So I try to tune in when I can um, just to check in and at least see what's going on. This past week or so has been filled with amazing highlights. So if you haven't seen them, check them out. Girls Gymnastics won the all around gold. Simone Biles had a triumphant comeback from the last Olympics to win the individual gold medal. And of course, we have all become obsessed with the pommel horse guy. Who knows the pommel horse guy? <laughs> exactly. And you all should because he is a former Penn State gymnast, Stephen Nadarashik. He needed an easier last name for, for those of us who want to uh, praise him. So these have all been amazing. But I also sometimes stumble into things like fencing or canoe slalom or rugby or synchronized diving. And I will watch intently but I truly have no idea what is going on. No idea how the rules actually work for the sport or how maybe it even came to be a sport or how somebody actually wins whatever they're doing. It seems that with some of these, if you aren't in the know, it seems a little chaotic and overwhelming trying to figure it out. And sometimes I understand so little of what I'm seeing that I'm not even really sure what questions I would ask. And even if the athletes or the coaches themselves tried to explain it to me, I'm not sure I would really get it. Confusing experiences, difficult questions. Our crowds today encounter similarly. These crowds are still trying to follow Jesus. Yet, what we actually find that rather than following him today, what they have actually done is lost him. For unbeknownst to them, in the evening after the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus and his disciples headed out that night to go back across the lake. If you remember, last week our gospel ended when Jesus actually startled and terrified the disciples when they found him walking on the water toward them. Jesus, that night, had left Tiberius and the crowds behind. But the crowds are intent on finding him. So word spreads that Jesus is back in Capernaum, so the crowd rushes to find him there. It seems the frenzy around Jesus keeps growing. The need of this people seems to be never-ending. They are enraptured and intrigued as they try to figure out what is this Jesus phenomenon that is happening around them. They might be feeling just like a little bit of the passion that builds around the Olympics. We know we are seeing great things, even if we aren't always sure what they are. So when the people find Jesus, they try to start asking him their questions. Somebody starts out by saying, Jesus, when did you come here? Maybe wanting to ask, Jesus, why did you leave us over there? But Jesus seems to sense something else in their question, something that lies beneath the surface of what they are asking. Or maybe Jesus is really just focused on something else already. Jesus' ministry is reaching a climax. 
But rather than bask in that glory and adulation, Jesus decides to push the crowds. It seems for him, now is not a time for celebration, but rather a time for teaching. It's a time for going deeper with these people gathered, and even a time for testing. It is a time for revealing that there is more to life than bread alone. And this is important because remember, these are the people who had just experienced the miracle the day before about just what happened with those loaves and fishes. Maybe they have all started to learn more as the stories travel throughout that crowd, that indeed it wasn't that there was a stockpile of food waiting, but in fact, Jesus brought the food to them. And they realize with that knowledge that they have been in the presence of a powerful teacher. They understand they have seen someone that can produce bread for the masses when there had been almost none, and this seems pretty impressive. But Jesus wants to warn them and us. He seems to say, do not be dazzled and amazed by this sign that I have done. The bread isn't the point. You need to begin to learn about the food and the nourishment that will endure for eternal life. And we might imagine the quizzical looks as the people wonder, what in the world is he talking about? Somebody starts to rumble. Is he talking about like the manna that came back in the old Exodus story? We don't get it. The questions are too hard. What we are seeing, too complex. And the truth is, we are too often stuck in the everyday happenings of our lives. We are all working and earning money to support ourselves and our families. We're striving to achieve dreams of prosperity and financial security, hoping that a life's work sustains us through this life. We want to ensure that our families will not go hungry. Why bread is so important. But Jesus says yes. They are important, but not the point for those whom Jesus comes to call and for those of us who hear his teaching. Jesus tells us that there is more to be revealed than bread alone. Jesus tells the gathered crowds, this is the work of God. Pay attention that you believe in him whom God has sent. The eternal food that Jesus speaks of, this food that will nourish and sustain us for all time, is in fact Jesus himself. Not the signs like the bread, but him. Flesh and blood, the divine son, the incarnate one whom God has sent. So if our job is to believe, the people ask, well, what signs are you going to keep on performing so that we can believe? As if Jesus is just simply going around putting on a daily show of wonders and surprises. But Jesus isn't some kind of magician or a stand-up act. He wants them to understand this is all so much bigger than that. Jesus continues to reveal the beyond belief truth that Jesus is the I am. Jesus reveals God to a world who seeks God. 
a world who longs for God and a world that is suffering in turmoil amidst the wilderness of the calamities around us. Through sickness, grief, neglect, want, oppression, and hatred, this world seeks God. Yes, each day we are hungry for food, and Jesus can provide that. He's shown us. But the truth he wants us to see is that we are hungry for so much more than that. And Jesus says he will provide that too. Jesus has come to reveal the kingdom of God through the revelation of his own life. We will find eternal life when we believe that he shows us the way to live. Jesus does not come to figure out how to fit into the lives we have created. Jesus reveals that the world around us has created an existence which traps and ensnares us, which tempts us all too often and lures us with things like power and privilege and domination. We live in a world that teaches us that God unleashed the power of dominion for just a few, rather than to hear the words of Jesus that recognizes the gift of caretaking that God gave to us, that we are to protect and shield and love all that God has created. Jesus shows us how to live like God intended. We are not just simply to believe in Jesus. We are to believe that Jesus shows us the way. And if we believe, we will follow Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is a belief that Jesus shows takes more than our mind. For to just simply imagine that we believe Jesus here is much too small of a task. Jesus comes to offer us redemption and from all the hurts of this world, all those things that we inflict upon ourselves and upon each other, and all those ways that we carelessly and intentionally harm the other creatures that we live with and the very world around us, often without consideration and often, too often, with the arrogance that it's all ours to destroy as we wish. God sent Jesus into the world to reveal the power and glory of the great I am. And this has been done, not only because God wishes to be worshiped and glorified, although that is rightfully God's expectation, but rather God has shown us over and over again that God's abundant grace and mercy reveals God's heart. God's aching heart at the choices we make. Those choices which defy God's call to us and upon us. God came into this world in order to reveal the heart of the good news. That God has come to offer us all salvation. God does not coerce us into obedience with violence and control, but rather God reveals the glory of the kingdom through Jesus. Jesus invites us into the eternal good that lies in wait for humanity to choose that which will help and heal, to choose that which will serve and love, that which will empty and sacrifice that which will recognize the sins that destroy us. That God intended the creation to be so much more than a place for suffering and shame and bloodshed. The writer of Ephesians says it like this. I beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called with all humility 
and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Can you imagine what the world would be like if we lived like this? If we believed in Jesus so much that we would embrace this kind of life. Imagine if we walked out these doors and there was no danger, there were no threats of war, there was no more hatred, there was no more realities of war. No enemies, no violence, no suffering, no poverty, no oppression. Imagine what that would feel like to know that outside we would only encounter the peace that rolls like thunder from the steadfast love of God. It would be a miracle. And God would smile. And Jesus would rejoice and the power of the Holy Spirit would explode through the world, lighting fires of faith and stirring winds of love. We would all be one people, God's people, a people fed by the food that endures forever. We would sit alongside Jesus and rest. Jesus the Son of God, Word of God incarnate, bread of life eternal. This one calls you to believe, dares you to believe in his way so much that you would be foolish enough to follow him. Amen. I invite the congregation to stand as you are able. We sing our hymn of the day.
Together we can confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share that peace with one another. Peace be with you, Julie. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Sorry. One in the communion of saints and in the power of the Holy Spirit we join our voices in prayer. O wise one, nourish your faithful people through gifts of word and worship. Guide the church in listening to and interpreting your message of grace for this time and place in history. In your wisdom, lead us in expanding the reach of your love. Merciful God. Holy God of all creation, phases of the moon and tides of the sea. Let these patterns of government leaders of this world unite for peace and justice. Humble all who hold authority, that power is directed toward a more just society. Merciful God, bread of life from heaven, you feed us. Fill all who hunger with needed nutrition and open our hearts to eliminate hunger in this world. May we see a day when all are fed. Merciful God, God of tears, you are the giver of joy. Hear us as we pray for the sick and for those who grieve. We pray for Shirley, excuse me, Alan, Pat, Sarah Jane, Roger, Charlotte, Joanne, Jack, Kathy, Roxy, Karen, Darlene, Ron, Chuck, Connie, Helen, Carol, Jesse, Millie, Jerry, and Lillian. Merciful God. Redeeming God, we give you thanks for the lives and witness of your saints now departed. Bring your beloved into eternal glory, opening wide the gates to the heavenly banquet. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. We lift up these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy keeping. Amen. Amen. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. In the Lord's Prayer, we ask God to give us today our daily bread. Jesus reminds us that he is the true bread that feeds our lives and souls. Daily we partake of Jesus through prayer and scripture, and as often as we may through holy communion. We will now worship God with our offering. Congregation may be seated.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, Holy One, for all good things come from you. In bread and cup you open heaven to us. Meet us at this table that we receive what we seek and follow your Son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So come to this table, you who have much faith, and you who would like to have more you who have been here often and you who have not been for a while, you who have tried to follow Jesus and you who are wandering still, come, it is Christ who invites us to meet him here. Amen. The congregation may be seated. <clears throat>
For those who will commune in your place, this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
I invite the congregation to stand as you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. People of God, equipped now for the work of ministry, Go in peace and be bread for the life of the world. And may the love of God, the power of Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit dwell richly in you forever. Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. We sing our sending hymn.
Christ Lutheran Church are. Go in peace, the living word dwells in you.